Alright, Rika, thank you for joining me today at uh, Anime Central. How are you doing today? Man, I'm doing pretty good. It's Sunday, and as you guys know, with uh, conventions on Sundays, everything's more relaxed. People partied their, uh, you know, their heads off last night, and other body parts <laughs> off last night. Uh, so, fortunately, I didn't, I didn't stay out too late. I was a little bit old man, turned in at like 11. Got some good sleep, got my coffee here right now. I know you guys probably can't see it, but anyway, yeah, feeling good. <laughs> good. You enjoying everything so far? And... Yeah, man, Chicago's awesome. Uh, I used to do a lot of theater in this area, so I, it's, I feel it's a real treat to be back for anime. Of all things, exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. And speaking of that, we're finally coming back. We're coming out of the pandemic now. Tons of fun and sad right. stuff. In general, for what you've seen so far, do you think we're, everyone's doing a good job at, like, help? Uh, I mean, I, I think so. It's tough always because, you know, uh, when I think of pandemics, like, we, uh, you know, those memes and things online, it's like, man, we've weathered so many things, haven't we, together, like all the big life events that keep happening, yeah. you know, 2020 and on. Uh, but I like to believe that we're, we're in a place where really at least we're starting to be conscious of how to take care of each other. You know, um, other countries who deal with uh, illness like this seem to know that putting on a mask is kind of common right. sense. And we very, you know, headstrong Americans, it takes a little bit, but man, we learn. So literally, so apologies about the whole That's but, fine, whatever you're talking about. Okay, yeah, I'll, uh, but yes, so that said, um, and, you know, being um, the social distancing, distancing aspect of it, especially from some of the shows I went to before, were really well respected. So yeah, I think just in general, sense of taking care of each other is uh, is being respected, which I really appreciate. Um, so, uh, you took a great tour your uh, so far. You you're coming up on like around 10 years now in the industry. How's it feel? You just made my Dorian Gray painting <laughs> freaking like, explode in my attic, bro. Like, it's crazy. Uh, I guess due to like acting, I, I used to do sales uh, when I was younger, and it's always like gig to gig, right? Like you don't you don't land them all, you don't win them all. But cultivating a career, just continuing to do gigs here and there, yeah, like the time seems to just fly by. And when you just said ten years, I'm like, oh my goodness, man, that's a drug <laughs> career. You know? But yeah, it's uh, I'm very grateful to be working uh, consistently. That's that's a, a good consistency is something that I feel like every actor is always a word they struggle with when it comes to uh, constantly working. Uh, but yeah, fortunately for myself, I don't just do voice work. I you know do commercials on camera stuff, okay. motion capture, theater. So oh. yeah, uh, I kind of take the work where I can get it. You know what I mean? So yeah. that was another thing I was interested in. Like outside of um, anime, he's done some video game roles. Uh, he's worked with um, a little bit of this. Dude, talk about baby days on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah. Like RVV. Like what? Exactly. I know. Halo One, you guys. Like, <laughs> come on. I was watching that like grade school. Like, Tell me about it, dude. I'm like, now we're on Halo Infinite. That'll yeah. make you feel old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <on> Halo Infinite. <laughs> How old am I now? Oh, come on. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Are you looking to do like more voice roles outside of anime? Or? Yeah. I mean, I do. I guess it's just the, the funny thing when you when you say that question. It's like uh, there have been things that I've been working on uh, that maybe aren't as well known. But, and of course, things that I can't talk about now that hopefully soon we will be able to talk about. But I love video games, man. And I've been doing a lot of those recently, so uh, pretty pumped to keep working on those because uh, they are a big part of my upbringing, I guess I'll say. Not to say video games raised me, but video games raised me. I, I feel that. <laughs> In a talent. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I uh, again, it's more for me, it's always been just like if I could just keep making a living performing. Uh, and now I'm at a point where I'm, I'm doing well enough where I can like hire my friends to work on projects, like get musicians and work on you know like covers and things. Like I never thought like your world kind of just slowly starts to expand uh, as you start to cultivate more career. Which man, I, I'm learning literally every day the, the more stuff that I can do. Uh, so I guess it's like if you have the recent cultural uh, animation. Have you seen any like direct effect on that for you personally yet, or just like keep going wrong? Not really, no. Uh, I mean, like I, I I bought some more Sony stocks, so, like, <laughs> and that's like one thing I did. Uh, for me personally, if I'm just being like candid, uh, it's always a, a thing of like you know. 
think about like branding and rebranding, and I, I think the irony of like Punchy Roll, like back in the day, weren't they like the OG site that you would just like yeah. watch anime on, like the yeah, <laughs> and yeah, now God. And now it's like, oh no, it's totally legit. <laughs> Which I imagine like the younger versions of ourselves were like, wait, you're watching Punchy Roll? Don't tell people, you get in trouble. <laughs> but now it's completely legal, legit, you know. Um, yeah. yeah, it always is a, a funny thing to me when uh, like something that was not popular when we were kids, like anime, or I guess very niche popularity, is now so widely loved and appreciated. Uh, and especially during the pandemic, when that was one of the few things that we could produce, you know, animation, without having to do, like, because again, I do on-camera projects, um, we couldn't get in the same room legally and shoot something. Like, in order to do that, we had to follow really stringent protocol for animation, you know what I mean? You could hire post houses, people could animate things, we could dump them, like, which was amazing. Uh, so I think animation really got like a boost these last few years. So I think it's pretty cool to have like a, a, a big, big like crunchy roll up here. Uh, a little sad because I, I have been working for Funimation for a while and the little purple logo was something I was used to, but you guys know how it is. Like brands change, things like move and shift, but for me as an actor, it always comes back down to the, the nitty gritty of like, are we making good work? You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. are we making good, power telling powerful, Good stories that we can all share. If that's what we're doing at the end of the day, I'm like, let's go. And speaking a little bit more about the, the remote recording, there's been a little bit of a push back towards in house work. Uh, specifically, I guess, uh, I would think that the dubbing industry, the long time industry, is getting to a point where we're, uh, I guess, more sanitary. More sanitary? Well, what, like, in terms of, like, Oh, yeah, all of my experiences, I'm coming out of Texas, and uh, it is a, a, uh, it's a like a right-to-work state, you know what I mean? So, like, you get a lot of indie things that come out there because it gets more affordable to produce work out there. Uh, but, fortunately, places like, you know, Crunchy Roll are, like, not skipping any steps in regards to keeping everyone safe, so, like, they have sanita sanitation crews come in literally after every actor. Like, it feels very cared, yeah, it's really great. Everything feels very clean, which is nice. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone's, you know, masked and, you know, kind of doing their own, despite, like, the state of Texas, you know, there's no mask mandate currently. But still, it's like just a respect thing uh, that we generally have, you know, masks are still encouraged. We have those signs everywhere, so, like, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like for the most part, it's it's a general. We are like a family there, so it's like we don't want people to get sick. So uh, we have like a, a a questionnaire that you have to fill out all the time. Like any time you come in, uh, you have to you know you have a fever. Have you been anywhere? If you if you've been traveling out of the country, you can't come in to record. So it's rescheduled and stuff like that. So it still is very much a priority to safeguard people and make sure that because if one of us gets sick, do you know what I mean? Like. That everything it's, goes it's, down. Right, dude. And imagine if you're like if you're like a lead person in a show, it's like, well great, we're not working for two weeks. Uh, or we have to get a voice match. Which don't get me wrong. I, I love trying to pretend to sound like my friends, but uh stressful bro. <laughs> <laughs> stressful. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of like a couple of years ago, like man, the voice actor got sick and it was like a big hubbub about that. So like imagine that across an entire show. Oh, man. And again, you know, like, I always think about my theater days. Like, the show must go on. We'll do the thing. But we have the tools to take care of each other. I still record and promote uh, for other projects. And every once in a while, for a crunchy, maybe if something gets kind of, like, you know, caught up in the studio. But, um, yeah. I mean, like, for me, I feel that uh, a weird uh, positive that came from the pandemic was I leveled up my home studio like crazy. So now it's, like, rock solid. So when I do do things for in the UK or Los Angeles or New York, like, they hear my sound sample, they're like, oh, you're in a studio. I'm like, I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's go. Uh, and I'm in my underwear recording. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, sipping on. Dude, like, so cool. Uh, yeah, man, I'm like, the comfort of your home. Uh, harder, harder to do that in studio. <laughs> Rico put some pants on. No, but, um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, so, but uh, really, generally, it's still like, you know, people are still taking care of each other and, you know, we are trying to bring, you know, business back is what it feels like most businesses are. So, uh, you know, and maybe it's a Texas thing. I'm from California originally. I know there are a lot of folks still, you know, like, you know, 
But then again, you know, like it's it's still COVID is still a thing. And there are people I've I had people personally to me that you know we lost, and so I treat it very seriously. Um, so uh, personally, that's just a me thing. So you know, all respect. If someone's like a beautiful compromise, I'm like great. You know, like mask is on. You know, like I'm, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to have to lose any more people. Sorry, that I'm used to paying for everything. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a trip to the ER in this country, like, ugh, bro. You know what I mean? Like, well, uh, it's and you guys know this. I'm not preaching to the choir. You know how it is. Like, you're lucky if you have very good health care in this country. Um, so unions, I think, are very good. And so I do have. I'm very grateful for uh, like that my my union that I have for stage. Um, Texas is. I mean, it's a very very independent state specifically. Very lack. We lack our, you know, <laughs> I want to work when I want to work. But like I said earlier, the positive of the right to work state is that if we went to go shoot something there or record something there, you can do it. You can do it. And it's not a crazy big budget. But consequently, we're not going to make a lot of money. And if something happens, we're kind of SOL. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you get hurt or something, sorry, dude, how are we going to, we got to figure it out. So, yeah, I, I'm, I've been doing this a while. Ten years. Can <laughs> yeah. you put that you visibly saw my beard get gray? <laughs> um, no, but um, yeah, man. I, I mean, like the only the only constant is change. I'm sure we're gonna move toward a thing, where especially as like you know companies get bigger, unions have to appear to protect. You know, it's a big part of also America and our country, like to protect the workers. Unions are important. Um, but who's to say what the future holds for it? Like maybe com some companies are really great about taking care of their people. And if they don't, people speak up. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, I'm not a big uh, fatalist, but I am a causality kind of guy. Right. Like, if people don't get what they need, they'll speak up. If people are cared for, they tend to not. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, that's all, I guess. So, for right now, again, I, I just mentioned, like, I'm part of the stage unit. So, like, like hooray! I have pretty decent insurance for that. So, I'm kind of <laughs> like, I'm taking care of my, I've crossed my T's and dotted my I's. But I imagine if you were doing just really like voice work stuff, uh, having some insurance, having a union to, to, to be a part of uh, would be, I think, vital. But um, yeah, it's a bit of a tight view. You're, you're a tight walk when you don't have anyone. So you're your partner. My brother, uh, he works in uh, the, uh, sorry if I'm talking too long, uh, school district. Uh, crazy good insurance in California. Dude, if you guys have school district insurance, like, you get like childcare, which is so expensive, right? You can drop your kiddo off, they get taken care of. Like, that's expensive stuff, man. That's like thousands of dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> that is paid for, uh, which as an actor, as you can imagine, is, is pretty tough to do. I, I don't think like any union for actors does that. But man, wouldn't it be nice? You know? It would be nice. <laughs> that's all I'll say about, about that, I guess. But because I don't, I honestly don't know. I have my stuff. My involvement is pretty, pretty limited. Because again, I do everything. So I have my like coverage in different ways, which I think is the main thing for union status. But uh, yeah, yeah. I guess I could kind of like sort of like philosophize about it, but it would all just be like me spitballing. Um, yeah, the industry is just kind of moving forward slowly, really in all different ways. I guess one of the more recent, uh, another recent push is that they're looking to sort of push more towards the first. Oh man, I'm so grateful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my partner actually worked on uh, Broadway's Hamilton for several years. And uh, the irony behind that, I'm a mixed race gentleman. Right. Uh, and uh, a second generation American. So I was born here, my family was not. Uh, when Hamilton came out, I was like, yes! <laughs> Black and brown folks on stage other than the, the you know, servant number three that I'll play. Not no disrespect, all the people that do stage, you know what I'm talking about. 
and Lynn Manuel Miranda was like, let's go, we're gonna make a show for, I actually did it in the Heights before that, right. but like, so exciting to be able to have shows where you can actually have a job, talk about having a job, like as a main character. Um, my partner is very Anglo, very fair-skinned, and she was the only person that got hired. It was so funny because all these folks like auditioned for it in Texas. And literally, she's the only person that hired, and she's like, you know, a white girl. <laughs> Which I was like, babe, that's so great. We're, you know, we're happy that she got it. But uh, uh, getting to like be around shows like that and see the, the reason why I bring that up is because that's such a big part of our uh, world right now. Like Hamilton, uh, Lemon, well, like you know, people making work to represent people. I think it's very important to have representation of people that, uh, you know, look and sound like you in your media. Uh, and Conto came out, you know what I mean? They're like, that kid is Colombian. And they're like weeping in the, in the, and I'm not Colombian, but like, they recognize it. They see the curly hair, they see the skin tone, they see the eye, like the attention to detail, man. It is heartwarming. For me, I guess it would be a good Spider-Man, no spoilers, but Ned's, uh, Ned's uh, mom, she's Filipino, I'm Filipino. With the wooden spoon on the wall, <laughs> the way she's like cleaning up after after Spider Man, you know, because he's hanging <laughs> on the roof with her her my heart, you guys, just sings when I see that. Because I don't, you don't typically see that. In media. So I think it's great. It's good that folks get to like experience more of it. You know what I mean? Because exposure, once you see it, it's not strange. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not weird anymore to know that there are other people that don't look or sound like you. So uh, yeah. I'm pumped for it. Okay, yeah. And like, specifically like in the dubbing world, we had like Daenerys and Oh yeah, as I know Daenerys. Erica, we had, I think, Shifuna Maybach was playing yeah. Amana, the dub for uh, Godfather. Yes! So, do you think they're like, general advice, or just something kind of put out for dubbing specifically about the verse? Or maybe just general thoughts? I mean, I mean like, I think it's what I just, it, it matters. Verse is very important. Uh, I'm also an actor, so I like to be able to believe I can be, I can work as anything. You know, I can be, I am mixed race, so like, I, my mother is very, you know, Anglo, Scottish, you know, English descent. Uh, so I like to believe I can play like a Scottish role in my Scottish group. But uh, if a, a Scotsman came up and wanted to do the role, Scotswoman, you know, to do the role, heck yeah, you know what I mean? Like, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's like, are we making work that is powerful that is that is the story that's bringing us together that we can share and if there's a piece of representation whether the person is you know uh, whatever creed race gender that helps tell that story you know let's do it I'm, I'm game for it as long as we're we're doing the work well you know what I mean that's at the end of the day because wouldn't it be a shame if like we did a very good like uh, job bringing in a very specific okay we have an astronaut we need to cast an astronaut in this role I know this makes sense I'm just like being silly here, uh, but that astronaut can't act his way out of a paper bag, and we now are stuck with a not good piece of art. You know right. what I mean? Like uh, we still have to perform it well. But um, I'm excited, man. I just had a, a really good conversation with Zeno about that Robinson uh, about um, representation in art. We had a really good panel about that, and uh, yeah, man. As a, as a multi ethnic person, uh, I sometimes I'm like. Oh boy, I could maybe audition for this. I might not, right? Because I am sort of. Yeah. But that is the talking to all my my fellow uh, mixed race friends out there. We're like, you belong, but kind of, but not really, but sort of. So like, uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. uh, but I think it's a gift because of what it does as an actor. Now I must be very specific when I'm playing a or auditioning for a Persian role. When I'm auditioning for a Filipino role, like I I need to really understand what the culture is, what the person is, like, and that's just, that's just good art, you know what I mean? Like, something that is fully invested in, researched, and, uh, uh, yeah, when the work is cared for, dude, it's, it's, hard. it's, uh, something I've learned in the industry, it's, it's impossible to ignore good work. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just one more question. Yeah, man. Yeah. Just, I'm having fun talking to you. <laughs> in your 10 years, World of uh, <laughs> work as a voice actor. Yeah, for sure. Um, is there a particular role that you designed that made you kind of shift your perspective on how to either the recording or how the character is written? Like yeah, 
feel like kind of the, something that uh, changed the, the trajectory, I guess, of how I approached the thing. Uh, I worked on a role in a show called Green Bar, Passions and Illusions. Uh, his name's Hanagiro. Uh, it's an isekai. We're dropped into another world. Um, we don't know where we came from, but we have to cobble a party together and figure out how to survive in this world. Um, I, roll, I play a lot of DZ. The character's also a rogue. I, I usually roll like the, the heavy DPS classes. Um, but also, that was the first time I got to meet and talk to some of my dear colleagues. I've never any voice before uh, in our recording. Like, if we recorded together, one of us would obviously go first, and, right. you know? So, it's not like theater where I get to talk to you and I'm looking at you like I am right now. It is uh, sort of lonely. You're, you're working in a box by yourself doing the thing. But, since that show, Justin Bryan, he plays my healer, Monito in the show, he plays Midori and my hero, like, very wonderful actor. Uh, Sarah Wheaton, uh, Jeannie Toronto, Jared Green, uh, Orion Pitts, Cliff Chapin, are like dear friends of mine now. That like, and that show is kind of a like, echo to sort of my experience of what happened in life as I grew up. Um, and that was also the show where I had my hemorrhagic problem. I had a uh, vocal injury that I mentioned earlier I got surgery to take care of. And my voice was very different. I was being very aggressive uh, in my career at the time. I was teaching, I was doing outdoor theater, I was playing Romeo in the park in uh, Shakespeare Dallas. I was uh, I told you, teaching two classes. I was directing a musical by the body stuff. I was another lead in another show. I was playing Jack with fairy tale the streets a lot. I was vocally exhausted. And also playing this very kind of emotional role. Um, the kid's tired in the show, man. But a lot of his monologuing is like, man, it's just exhausting. And like so much of art emulated life in that in that role. Uh, that I uh, what I learned from taking away from it was uh, you know, rest, yeah. how to rest, um, and letting letting the art sometimes affect you. It's actually my all-time favorite scene that I have is with Jeannie Toronto. There's a scene where we lose one of our party members who's dear yeah. to us, and uh, she's just trying to connect to him, but he's a little socially um, unavailable. He just doesn't know how to communicate. Right. It is one of the most, like, open-hearted scenes I've ever had. And it has resonated with me since this day, where you're trying to match the flaps, but the animation is so stinking good that like you can hear him go, like he doesn't inhale and it kind of stat stutters, and you can see the animation. And I was able to capture it. Um, I believe he's able to in Japanese as well. And it, everything just felt like we were like hitting that sweet spot, man. You know, like it when you know you hit a good work, it just felt like right. The director's nodding. I'm nodding. I'm crying, but I'm nodding. You know what I mean? Like, it's when we, we're all doing a good job, we know we're doing a good job, and you're like, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, you know? You're gonna come in tired one day, you're gonna come in, you know, like maybe you had something bad happen at home. But we were, we were trying to do that good work when I was talking. So, yeah. Um, Grimgar of Ashes and Illusions, I'll say. If I recall about that show, one of the big, like, themes in the show is just communication. So, this kind of very, it literally, I had this thing in my throat that was stopping me from like, it was like a wolf. Uh, and then once I got it taken off, it was like, yeah, kind of, kind of revelatory. I appreciate you. You watched it. I appreciate you watching yeah. it. Yeah. It's been a while. I like, I Every once in a while, I like Google it. Yeah. I'm like, season two when? <laughs> but you know how anime is, you guys. Anyway. It is 11.30, so I didn't know if you had anywhere to go, but I mean, we... This is back to the table. I'm really excited to do the Final Fantasy concert, you guys. I'm a huge uh, Omatsu nerd, and I will cry like a baby at 1 o'clock. If you guys are going to go to it, I think it's at, uh, it's at the hotel. But uh, highly suggest you guys like Final Fantasy. Okay. okay. But yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, I had any questions. Any parting thoughts? Or What's that? Any parting thoughts? Parting thoughts? Uh... Yeah, I feel like we're really spoiled, you guys. We got a lot of really great content out there. Like, it's wild to me that, you know, production companies like Netflix, got Castlevania, got Life 4, you know, like games, like uh, game shows, sorry, that's weird to say, shows that are about games like The Witcher are really stinking good. And you got fellow nerds like, you know, freaking uh, uh, Her uh, uh, Mr. Cavill. Playing, playing Geralt of Rivia, I'm like, yes! Like, you guys, I feel like we have a lot of really great stuff. All the Spider-Man, we got the Thief, we got like, 
come on. There's so much good stuff out there. I just feel very uh, spoiled as a as a nerd right now for all the things that I love and gaming. FF7 Remake, come on, come on. Anyway, I just, I'd like to share to the world that I'm very grateful that I get to be uh, around in this time right now with y'all. Uh, and all of the production end of it, like getting to make it, you know what I mean, is a, what a gift. And then we get to play it <laughs> and or watch it together later. So yeah, just know that I'm my fellow uh, nerd, uh, uh, spidey senses are, are tingling um, when you are as well. So I'm right there with you. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thanks man. Some really great uh it was fun to reflect. Yeah.